Hello and welcome back to another episode and playthrough of a game. My name is Saiken and today we're going to visit an all-time favorite. I am deviating a bit from the path that I've outlined in 2023. Phoenix Point is going to come next, but today we are actually going to look at another game that is near and dear to my heart and uh, that I played a bit more often recently. It's none other than uh, Skyrim, but before you say, ah, oh, Saiken, 11 years old game, why are you going to do a playthrough? Hear me out first and foremost. It's not going to be a full playthrough, but this is what they, they call as a dead is dead or permadeath run, where we are playing Skyrim and we only have one life. The moment that we die, the run is over. Secondly, the idea is not to play Skyrim as is, but uh, to actually play the hardest version of Skyrim there is. And the 11 years in the modding community, for those of you who are unaware, have spawned quite a few mods that make the game more difficult. One of the most accepted mods amongst them is called Requiem. We're going to play exactly that. And one of uh, the mods for Requiem, almost kind of a mod for a mod, uh, so to speak, is called uh, Three Tweaks or Three BF Tweaks. Uh, essentially, uh, other modders have continued to make the game harder and more balanced as in uh, removing all of or most of uh, the glitches. So I will in this video for the first five minutes give a short overview about what that run uh, is supposed to achieve and then we're jumping right into the game. I fully appreciate that not everybody is following the Skyrim modding community hence I want to make it as beginner friendly or as entertaining for those who aren't hardcore Skyrim fans and equally appeal to people that may have not seen this channel before and want to start uh, fresh with a playthrough of uh, Requiem 3BF tweaks. Now let's start with uh, what is Requiem. Good, so Requiem in a nutshell is a complete overhaul of Skyrim. To explain Egg Requiem in only two minutes is a challenge because it does so much, but the four most important things are number one, it completely changes the way that the game operates. The game is now a leveled world, meaning no more enemies that are just as high level as you are no matter where you go. Every single enemy has a level. If you go into areas that are far above your level, the likelihood of you immediately dying will be very, very high. Second main change that Re Requiem was doing was completely reworking the skill trees and perks behind here. Whilst in the normal game, it was absolutely achievable to be a master of all of the categories at once. Requiem has taken that out. Requiem furthermore has made every single tree more individualized and more valuable. Speechcraft as an example gives you quite a few impacts on your shouts or your followers in, in terms of uh, becoming a better leader. And there could be tens and tens of examples of uh, that for the other perks that have been updated. The third uh, change to Requiem is the way that combat in general works. Stamina is much more important. If you run out of stamina, you can be disarmed and killed quite uh, easily. There are dozens of scripts that make uh, the actual combat feel more believable. It is no longer just chopping away, but you really need to make sure to look for openings, a block at the right time, move at the right time. Positioning becomes incredibly important in the game itself. Number four, the overall power level of the game and the immersiveness have changed drastically. Whilst the classical game was really a triple A title of you being a half god dragonborn, that was just good at everything. And in a sense, uh, a bit of a Mary Sue at some point. And I'm not trying to, uh, to be negative about Skyrim. It's just a fantastic game. But the power level itself was always quite high. In Requiem, the uh, lethality of the game is massive. If you're getting hit once or twice, you can uh, die. You're seeing examples of that uh, right here. And 
the comet itself is also balanced around uh, those means there are a lot of uh, stone paper scissor type of combinations where certain armors uh, are countering certain uh, um, certain weapons and vice versa certain weapons uh, have certain stats essentially the entirety of the combat system has been made much more difficult much more believable but also much more realistic and lastly, I think that's an additional point. Skyrim adds tons of non-combat relevant uh, topics that I will not go through. Plus, Skyrim offers uh, the opportunity to essentially just live in the world of uh, Tamriel as a non-dragonborn. Uh, and that gives it a bit more of a believable kind of everyday guy uh, feel, which we're also going for in this run. So that's it for Requiem. Now, the next question would be, why is there a mod for a mod uh, with 3BF tweaks? And the reason for that is, I should say, before moving on to 3BF tweaks, one fifth and major point of Requiem that I've forgotten is the fact that many of the main abuses, i.e. glitches, specifically the very uh, infamous uh, alchemy enchanting and smithing glitch that basically allowed you to uh, craft equipment run into town learn those three skills and craft equipment that completely trivializes the game because it is better than anything that you will ever find that has completely been removed uh, the equipment that you will find in the game is now hand uh, placed and many of the um, legendary items i.e. Dedrick artifacts and other great items are actually really really kick-ass so you're looking forward to get those now on to be a 3bf tweaks so in order to explain why there is even a mod for a mod let's shortly explain how requiem uh, developed requiem exists since 2013 essentially the modding community is still very active there is a group of people working on it so the mod itself is fine uh, it is an immersive overhaul like i said combat is just one part of it however a few people that enjoyed the combat aspect and specifically focused more on permadeath uh, runs um, found out that requiem uh, still has a few small flaws specifically around kind of balancing pacing placing certain items and making them way more obtainable so that you end up always kind of going to the same places uh, get the same good items and then try to beat the game it's not really um, cheesing but using the game knowledge in order to overcome it and what 3bf tweaks uh, did is it started with three tweaks then b tweaks and then f tweaks which is uh, really three sub mods uh, did a very comprehensive uh, rework of the entirety of uh, requiem the overall mod list or change list is i think 42 pages long so i'm not going to do it justice by just rushing through it but in a nutshell the highlights of what 3bf tweaks does is the following number one it uh, very carefully balances uh, weapons racial abilities of each of the races and removes a couple of uh, core um, elements of the game and instead adds others the stones for instance that you could uh, acquire within uh, Skyrim and also within Requiem have now changed instead of uh, stones they are now called birth signs indicating that it indeed is a permanent choice so no more changing there um, they have also been reworked because there were a few obvious choices that uh, were just better than others. Secondly, instead of just going to the temples and always getting uh, the blessings, uh, now you can get a, a permanent blessing of a divine called divine blessing. Each of those blessings also give, uh, give a stat bonus. And really, a character within 3BF Tweaks is a... Uh, conglomerate out of your race which gives certain st uh, stats your weapon choice and skill choices uh, that matter quite uh, significantly your birth uh, sign and your blessing that you're uh, that you're choosing all of that together there's kind of a, a lot of knowledge behind how to create a proper build now to not make it too theoretical i think that sets the scene it's going to be a very grim a very hard 
a very harsh world where it is incredibly easy to uh, to die. And the idea of this run is permadeath really means we have one life. We got to be super careful with that and we will need to achieve a uh, quest. I'm not going to play as the Dragonborn. Instead, I'm going to play as Hamza. Hamza, uh, the curse of Debella. Hamza has been an imperial soldier uh, that uh, at some point had started to hear whispers and voices in his head and essentially uh, started to get a bit paranoid, maybe even insane. However, it turned out that those voices were the uh, chance of Debella, who maybe has chosen him as one of his uh, of her many disciples. And maybe it has been something else. Maybe it's just imagining all of it. He left the army as a deserter is therefore currently no longer uh, participating in the war and is thinking about his life choices. The goal of this run is to survive and the actual like finale, uh, you, uh, you need to have some goal in mind, is solving uh, the civil war quest, hence the soldier background. So if Hansa can either go to the Imperials or uh, to the Nords, do successfully uh, survive the civil war quest and become the civil war hero, then that will be a successful run. Uh, wish me luck because that is not going to be very easy. Let's jump right into it and see how the game looks. All right, and here we are in the game. Let me introduce Hamza to you. Hamza, the cursed of the Bella, or one of the cursed disciples of the Bella, is going to be the main protagonist. And I just thought to myself as I was uh, starting Skyrim, if he actually fought in a civil war, how about we let him not partake in the war? Because I would have a difficulty to uh, either play him as a traitor uh, or um, go back as a deserter. Instead, he will have the target to finish the companion uh, questline. For those of you unaware, that's the questline of the Warrior's Guild. Now, back to the interface and the character. I'll do a... a rough explanation of what we're going to do and only focus on the one uh, on the aspects that are relevant for the build on the left hand side you see our resists and uh, armor rating plus our uh, movement speed hamza himself is equipped with a complete set of leather armor we do have an iron greatsword and uh, we do have uh, five small portions of healing, which he uh, still stole from the stash in uh, the war, and a little bit of potato soup. In Requiem uh, food, specifically cook, uh, cooked food, is quite important as it contributes to uh, long-lasting combat bonuses. In uh, this case, it is a stamina regeneration and an increase of stamina. So this is really all uh, he has currently, um, as well as uh, two. 230 gold pieces that's really it hamza is not really re uh, really rich um let's get a look uh, on that bad boy he indeed however is quite handsome uh, i chose the black eyes as to represent him being semi-possessed okay moving on to the build itself the build itself uh, and i'll talk shortly about the skills will consist uh, mainly out of uh, two-handed fighting as our main source of damage. We will be heavy armor wearing and uh, we will uh, spice that kind of uh, soldier-ish-esque uh, uh, up with a bit more magic. We only choose one major school to go in and that's going to be illusion as the bella as a goddess is favoring illusion as her magic i'm potentially going to dip very slightly into restoration just to have a bit of healing and other than that it's going to be a tiny bit in blocking to make sure that we can withstand attacks and the last one is maybe smithing uh, as in to increase our uh, weapons and our armor a little bit. So that's generally what the uh, build looks like. Really the main spheres, so to speak, are going to be two-handed and heavy armor as well as illusion. That's really what the build revolves around. And in terms of uh, the illusion magic, uh, the illusion magic in Skyrim and 
maybe we're looking uh, into the requiem uh, side of it. The illusion tree, uh, let's talk shortly about how that works in requiem. When you skill into a, a magic tree, you always get a couple of spells automatically. It's almost like a wizard uh, in Dungeons and Dragons who learns uh, spells as he levels up. So that main axis, the middle axis that you're seeing here, is essentially the uh, tree from novice, apprentice, adept, expert, and then master, those five dots, uh, representing 20 dots of increase in skill every single time. The left-hand side uh, over here are self-buffs. Um, Illusion in Requiem has been uh, re-fluffed as uh, the, not, the school of trickery uh, and also a bit defensive magic, specifically visual, uh, uh, visual distortion, which makes it more difficult for archers to hit you, muffling of your sounds and so on. Whilst the right-hand side is what you classically know from illusion. Uh, so uh, typically uh, anything around vivid dreams, uh, anger, uh, berserk, uh, when they uh, start to fight each other. And really what Hamza is going to do is focusing more on the right hand uh, side. I imagine him as a dream warrior um, who can um, put others into para paralysis and nightmare slumber and then finishing him off that way so that's going to be our magic uh shortly heavy armor just so that you have heard it three different uh, uh three different trays the left hand side of the tray uh essentially gives you the option to cast without uh, using more magicka um, or reduce the increase of magicka required when having heavy armor uh, per uh, per perk uh, so novice apprentice expert uh, uh, adept expert and then master uh, the way that requiem works with casting in heavy armor is you pay a huge huge addition if you cast spells in heavy armor making it less of a no-brainer that uh, you wouldn't automatically go with heavy armor. The middle perk is really one with special abilities, such as uh, being able to overrun uh, someone taking less damage when sprinting, uh, removing uh, the stamina requirements when uh, sprinting. Um, out of the gate, heavy armor is almost unplayable because you're losing stamina just by wearing heavy armor, let alone you can't move in it, can't sprint, all of the attacks cost more stamina and your spells cost more mana. So without a perk and heavy armor, you just can't really w work that through. And the right hand side is uh, combat st stamina perks in, st um, in heavy armor. Essentially, this is what you want to go when you're a warrior and want to have a bit of an easier time to, uh, to work with heavy armor. The entrance perks are important, also the little bit higher caster perks. Uh, we're going to see how deep we're going to scale into it. And last but certainly not least, uh, two-handed weapons for this build. We are starting with damage increase on uh, the bottom. Then in uh, the middle, uh, the uh, there is a bit of a reduction in uh, stamina requirement for heavy uh, for heavy attacks uh, for two-handed power attacks. They cost fifty percent uh, less. Without that perk, it's really really difficult to get power attacks off. Then you essentially do have three focus uh, areas: swords, axes, or warhammers. Swords fastest, uh, warhammers hit hardest, and penetrate most armor and axes are a happy medium in between. What we're going to do is we're likely going to end up with axes because if we're going into the companion quest, the very last weapon that you get for finishing it is the legendary axe of uh, the companions and it would be fitting if he actually has it in his hands at some point. Then you do have a few uh, special strikes, devastating uh, strike, devastating charge, uh, cleave. So that's uh, left to right, uh, charge attack and uh, basically uh, an, an extra uh, damage multiplier for power attacks. You do have uh, re a reckless strike, which gives you particularly more damage. And you can see the requirements uh, here become higher and higher. 
Um, I'm not even sure if we're going to live that long. At the end, uh, two-handed weapons deal even more damage. So what to expect from this build? We're trying to uh, overpower our uh, enemies with uh, superior magic, and we're uh, trying to do that by sending them into the lucid world of nightmarish dreams and then slashing them into pieces. But before we can do that, we need to start very, very small. And what I will do at the beginning is we do have three perks as we start. I'll put two of them into Great Weapon Mastery uh, for two-handed weapons, giving us a solid plus 30% two-handed uh, weapon bonus, which is much needed. And the second one I decided to do as a dip in um, Restoration, which is the healing school. Uh, Restoration itself, here you can see, um, offers you to learn two spells. We're going with Healing Aura, which is kind of a long-lasting buff on yourself. The Requiem per se doesn't have health regeneration. With Healing Aura, it does have health regeneration. And... Uh, healing uh, self is the channeled version of a self heal. Don't expect too much of it uh, without going deeper into restoration. The healing is quite limited, but restoration has a few nice features, uh, some stat buffs um, as well as uh, some uh, some buffs uh, that allow us to resist magic, a little bit of uh, self-heal. So I could see that restoration could be a support uh, for us just to kind of get by, but restoration would be the lowest of our priorities. In order of priority, we want um, uh, two-handed weapons done, we want uh, the illusion magic done, we want heavy armor done, these are the three main. Restoration maybe, smithing maybe, um, that and blocking a little bit as well. Those are more the kind of supportive ones. Good. Build explained. Let's move on. Hamza still has a few more things to do. I mentioned how um, the uh, stones have been removed. Instead, you get that power here called choose a birth sign. And uh, basically, there are around, I think, 10 or 12 uh, birth signs. What we are going to do in this run is we're going with the birth sign of the warrior. Uh, those born under the, war uh, under the uh, birth sign of the warrior, natural born combatants, provides resilience as well as knowledge in weapons and combat. We start with 30 more health, which is super important. Um, specifically if we want to fight in melee, 10% more damage with all martial weapons. That, of course, goes for two-handed weapons as well. And mind you, all of these here are multiplicatively. And finally, 5% uh, more points of armor penetration which e with each weapon category. Yes, please. Uh, Hansa, uh, also, although he's a half-caster or battle-caster, uh, is still going to focus very much on his two-hander. Now, that's number one. Number two, there is a blessing. And that's really where hum, um, Hamza uh, Chosen of the Bella comes into play. You can choose one out of uh, the Divines, which are kind of the Goddess, uh, or you choose one out of uh, the Daedras. Each of uh, the nine Divines and the nine Daedras does have um, certain uh, advantages and disadvantages. If you're interested in it, just check out uh, 3BF uh, Tweaks homepage and you can see all of it. We're going with Dibella. Uh, follow of Dibella get 100 armor rating and 7.5 armor penetration for melee and ranged attacks, which is good. Keep in, uh, see already there is a theme that we want to have armor penetration um, to make sure that our axes are uh, going nicely through them and a little bit more armor plus a little bit more health from the warrior's uh, birth sign. Dedicated uh, followers who are apt at uh, uh, persuading cast up to 20% cheaper illusion spells. This here is based on successful dialogues uh, where we are pers uh, persuading that. So we need to do a few quests, which yes, we're going to do amongst, uh, amongst other things. And then finally, champions of Dibella cannot be staggered and are immune to fall damage. Champion in this case means there is a Dibella quest uh, specifically of the Temple and Dibella uh, in Markrath, which we're going to do. That immunity to fall damage is fantastic in a permadeath uh, run because no pushing from a ledge or accidentally uh, running uh, across a mountain and then uh, dying. So 
Debella is with us. Debella does have a couple of limitations as well. We can't be a werewolf. Uh, no, we can be a werewolf. She actually does not have the limitations. Others do. You can be a werewolf here, which is good because we're going with the companions. I think if my memory serves me well, you can't be caught uh, while stealing. Uh, she's lenient with uh, stealing elsewise, but you can't have too much of a bounty on your head. Okay, cool. So that's the character. Anything else that uh, we need to do? I think we are more or less good to go. We got the potato soup. We got some healing potions. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, favorites, we got our great sword and uh, hot keep uh, the potions. So wish me luck as we have started in Riften. As we've started in Riften and we're kind of. The guest of this inn. Oh, there we go. Yeah, uh, we're the guest of this inn. Uh, this guy here, uh, uh, Lewis, would give us a quest to get a horse, but that's a little bit uh, too early. I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple, a little bit of fighting now, and we're also going to get our first uh, small magic item just to uh, to to start off um, with a bit of a dungeon. So off we go. Good, we do not want to go into survival mode, that would just add a lot of additional headaches, such as temperature, wetness, hunger, and so on and so forth. Uh, not that we wouldn't generally do it, but uh, it just doesn't add to this playthrough and doesn't really make it more difficult. It, if anything, makes it more cumbersome. So, we're going to go in here. I'm just double checking. I'll do the loot kind of off screen. That way it's uh, less of a burden f uh, for you guys. We're going right into the red way where we hopefully uh, will get our first ring. Good. Hamza definitely wears his uh, head. We're going to chuck the tomato soup. Uh, the, um, the potato soup. And off we go. Careful here. Good, I'll talk through the combat in a second. At the moment, it is rather intense. Oh, he's trying to bait me, but... We're going for the archer. One strike, and this guy lost his weapon. Another strike, and he goes down. And finally, he is down for good. One-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano. Breaking through his defense with a power attack. Using the opening. Careful now. Half of our stamina almost done. I'm waiting for an opening. Alright, he seems to be quite defense oriented. And finally he goes down. Not the cleanest of all fights. Uh, let's talk about something that uh, 3BF does as well. You will find those diluted inside potions. I should have talked about that as well. Uh, people were uh, that were playing Skyrim for a longer period of time were quite upset about the fact that you always need to uh, use skills in order to level them. So what 3BF tweaks does really is it uh, offers uh, a an item which is called a potion of insight and that potion of insight can drop in a diluted very small fragmented form uh, from uh, enemies but will also be at quest points at chests and other items and what uh, what these items are doing is they offer you maybe let me just show it if you drink it uh, they basically offer you uh, something that is called increased skills so here we do have one point and uh, now we could uh, for every five points uh, that we acquire we can actually choose the skill that we want to level up uh, the way that it works is until level uh, until 25 it is uh, five points for one skill then it's 10 for one 15 for one and 20 for one so for 
uh, 25, 50, 75, and 100. Uh, these are the breakpoints, making it uh, very much in line with the normal leveling curve, but allowing you to decide what you want uh, to level, which is a great feature. I, I really appreciate that. So uh, one thing that we have done yet so far is the healing aura. See how it takes all of our uh, all of our uh, magicka just to get that healing aura going. But on the right hand side, we're now seeing a nice uh, little plus, uh, which is the indication that uh, we are healing. The arrows uh, are the buff indication for the soup. Let me make them a little bit smaller so that it is convenient. All right, good. The uh, the lichens are a bit smaller now. Uh, what I wanted to show you as well is just our healing. So healing overall, let's uh, hotkey that to say three. And I mentioned it's not a lot, but it gets some uh, healing done. We're out of mana for now and we got to be careful. There are a lot of traps uh, that are quite dangerous one here in particular that easily can kill you and this is where the next fight is going to happen i think there was one person here if i'm not mistaken skeever is down He fights unarmed, and he was the one we were looking for, but there is still another enemy. Oh yeah, right up there. Jumps down. Come on. Taking the opening, slashing him nicely. Careful now, Saiken. Fantastic. Good. We took one hit, uh, which maybe was a one more than uh, actually was needed. But we will get a potion of insight. No, nope. but we'll get that ring of recuperation, 20% faster mana regeneration and magic items, gloves of the pugilist. Uh, the guy was a brawler. So if you ever want to play a unarmed build which definitely is a thing here in skyrim that's the way to go uh shortly double checking if there is anything we take the h go cheese because that is a good food for us and i think other than that we just need to be careful there are so many more traps here yep there are quite a few traps here All right, anything that we would find here? Uh, poison, I'll take that. Yes, please. Another poison. Okay, against stronger enemies, that might be a good thing. What did we get? Poison of burning oil, health damage, and uh, target is more weak to um, magic. We can ignore that safely. There was another trap up there. There you go. Iron Battle Axe, pretty damn good, um, but slower than our weapon. However, I think it's quite sizably stronger, 129. Nah, we're sticking with ours for now. Okay, so far so good. Getting a skill book. No need for the dagger. Just quickly double checking. I will do most of uh, the looting off screen so uh, that I keep uh, the actual video to a reasonable length because we're doing a lot of fighting in this one. Good. That was our first small intermezzo. We got ourselves um, 
Gloves of the Pugilist. We got Aged uh, Cheddar, which is Magicka increase, but also Stamina and uh, Magicka and Health uh, increase for a while. And now it is time to do a few smaller quests here, just to get it started, really. Um, I'll skip forward to the first quest NPC. Very good. So we just went uh, to the harbor uh, of Riften. It's basically literally a uh, one minute uh, walk and went into the fishery and we're talking with you. Swims in deep water. I'd like to improve my of course. Uh, fishing. Could you teach me a couple of uh, uh, things? That yep. Doesn't change anything. Um, then read the list of fair wealth uh, feather and uh, I bring I back to uh, fish to him. And really what we are uh, what we are doing is catch of the day read the list uh, that he wants uh, to have done and I will uh, get us a carp, a glassfish, a goldfish and a pockfish uh, with some fishing. Fishing Mastery Volume 1. Yep, thank you. You in town, eh? Here for the fishing, I guess. Good. We don't want to steal, and I don't want to make this here too cumbersome to watch, so this is effectively just us warming up, getting a couple of resources. You need to leave. You yeah, we can uh, leave something. in a second. So here is the fish we asked for. Took a while. Well. But we do... Well, does he have anything other than this note? All right, then. All right he has a couple more uh, fishing quests, but we're not going to do that. Uh, we're off good enough. I will invest uh, the 200 gold pieces into more potions. And we're going to take it from there. Next up, uh, or next stop, is the Jarl. Uh, who's hopefully going to give us a few bounties. Bounties are a system in uh, Requiem and 3BF Tweaks in particular to allow you to go for um, banded content because um, the typical player doesn't want to quest all day long but really wants to fight more and advances character via a kind of combat uh, gameplay. And that's fine. I will do a few quests in and between just uh, to uh, to get things started. In this case, uh, we're doing one or two quests and then uh, a longer expedition with uh, dungeons. So I want to keep it uh, quite balanced. Uh, let's take... I hope the road fared well. uh, let's talk to I Welcome think to there we go I'm looking for work the Jarl, put out a the, uh, the, uh, Jarl. For fantastic so let's take a look um, there we go Kill the bandit leader located at Travel Watch in the rift, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Once uh, the night is over, we're going to sleep one more time, and then we'll be traveling there. Um, oh, that's pretty far travel, and in between there are a couple of uh, camps. Travel's Watch itself is difficult, so we shouldn't start there, but we do have a few camps here and there. All right. Um, Let's sleep and I'll be on my way afterwards. All right, started to move out of Riften and with the new texture packs, I mean, Skyrim can look gorgeous. We are on our way to one set of fallen runes to hopefully find some bandits. Not 100% sure I've never done the rift and start. Always done uh, camping out in the woods, random, and uh, wide run. Okay, well, that's an archer. We don't want to mess with. And the fact that it is nicely 
uh, outlined in red means uh, that uh, the bandit is rather high level way more high level than we are it's so got to be careful here another bandit uh, coming up to us one on one oh no magic not a good idea Let's try to dispose of this guy as fast as possible. Power attack into the open space. And we're almost out of stamina. Time for us to actually move. I think this one here was stamina. I collected... Oh, wow. Well. Wrong time for a latency. So we got that archer down there. And we need to regain stamina quite a bit. All right, hurt one of uh, the arrows or bolts rather to break. There we go. Well, that is how deadly Requiem really is. He was a higher level than we. But unfortunately for him, we got the two-hander and he really couldn't deal with it. There is another... There are two more actually back there. Let's be careful. This one was not only an archer, but also a trickster. As he does, it did have a couple of uh, scrolls. Let's just double check. Diluted potion, that's good. We got some silver bolts, which we may be using later. And the well made uh, leather items are potentially better than our leather helmet. Yeah, so first armor upgrades here. Better leather armor. What's up with this guy down here? Diluted potion. Well made fur armor is potentially still worse than the one that we're wearing. Let's just double check real quick. Yeah, not even close. Okay, cool. All right, time to go into the remaining fort. Uh, still one archer up there. As long as we keep our distance, they are not that deadly and by not that deadly I mean I at least have a chance to evade oh no that's another archer evade it <laughs> Okay, well, we took some damage. Let's heal that up rather quickly. Longbow. Uh, I think I'm not going with a bow as a backup weapon. Yeah, we're all good. I have collected a few... Let me... Let me just uh, eat our cheddar here. I've collected a few uh, ingredients, mainly flowers, who have healing properties. You can see them now kicking in as I'm eating them more for Fotki. There is still one more archer up there. And we can take a different route to them. Archers on uh, fortress walls are quite dangerous. Who would have thought, right? Okay, let's try to in invade the port from here. Well, that uh, won't work. But this may as well work. Oh, sh shoot. Time for reload, and for us, time to end this. Good, really quick. Two insights, some money, 
And nothing that we need. Okay, cool. Good, careful, careful here. One more archer up there, I think. Oh, gotta be careful, we don't have... That might be deadly. Come on. Shoot. That'd be a bit difficult, dude. Alright. What a nail biter. These guys had healing pulses with them. Uh, mm. This is the equivalent of our healing aura. You can just uh, drink them. And it essentially will uh, slowly but surely heal you up. Might as well use the rest of our mana. Just in case we're running into a trap. And now it's time to explore the outdoors. And loot up. There's still an indoor area, which is going to come up. I figured that t uh, tower might have had a chest in there. Typically all of the forts do have a chest. They are hand placed here in order to incentivize uh, doing them. But apparently this one here, the garn uh, garrison, uh, does only have them inside. We're going to heal up. And I'll fast forward until we're in. Good, let's enter on the other side. What was that? What was that? Oh no, magic. Oh no, magic. That's a big fat no no. Are they coming out? No. All right, well, uh, we are going to skip that fort and are going to take it an easier camp. You might uh, think that's an overreaction, but on level one, uh, things are actually quite problematic. So we drank all of uh, our insights and I think uh, we've deserved four now. Uh, to increase our skills and uh, the first uh, thing that I would want to do is level two-handed up. We're still a little bit uh, shy on the two-handed part overall. Good. Not enough really to get a level but okay uh, for now. The idea is to get two-handed to 20 so that our power attacks are going to be a little bit more impactful. Let me, in the meantime, travel to a next location where we can uh, maybe be a bit more successful. I wasn't aware that there were mages in there. That's definitely uh, too high of a level for now. Very good. So we find ourselves in the middle of uh, the landscape and all of a sudden a tower popped up. One that has orcs in it let's talking more fighting this guy is one-handed and thus we uh, can out damage him and outrange him waiting for the opening there we go all right come on Diluted potions, and yeah, we weren't really lucky here. There's a big fat boss bar, which tells us uh, there's at least one enemy who is 20 levels above us. And uh, that can only mean pain. Hearing more orcs inside. Alright, 
Let's do this. What? All right, come in. Could use a bit of an upgrade for our weapon. Why are these guys not coming out? And of course, the moment that I'm uh, taunting them, he steps forward in order to come out. Nice little break of his defense. And we use the opening in order to kill him. All right, let's just quickly double check. I'm not sure what that guy is all about. He seems to be stuck in there. And I heard an orc from behind, but it might also be from above. Right, nicely outside of his range. Fantastic. Good. Three down. More to go. I like the steel helmet, but steel is very, very uh, heavy. I will try to go for something a little bit uh, lighter. For now, let's just take iron as a standard for us. We can always uh, throw that away. Uh, potentially need to throw this one away. Good, we gotta be careful with our carry weight. All right. Ah, oh, that's the boss. Woven armor. We don't want to be uh, getting hit here. But this guy is at least level 21. And he's almost taking no damage. Now he's semi stuck. But he's maybe just taunting us. He, he was just uh, moving forward. Oh boy, what a massive strike. All right, I gotta wait here. Get the health back up. We need to be on full health in order to even take one hit. Luckily, he seems to be stuck there. Or just doing a dance move, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, come on. I'll show you what a real Dude, I don't want to cheese you. Please come down. Single hits, and he is so high level that his swing speed is almost as fast as mine. But keep in mind, he has a warhammer in hand, so I should theoretically get in and out without a problem. So we're definitely going to use our poison here. Also, eating all of our. Uh, Flowers that we have uh, gotten. So I got a few left over, so we're fine. I'll show you a real fight. Damn, I don't want to die. He's at half health, and we do have poison. So the name of the game must be to get him down with poison. So I'm okay with this here. I'm not okay with him being stuck. We could. 
ring, uh, run around to the tower and kite him, so I don't mind just healing back up. That's fine. I do take a bit of an offense in him being such a wuss and not moving in. Alright, this will good that he does not retaliate uh, that. Alright, come on. Come on. Hit us. Try. I thought I was in range. So close. Oh, this is a dangerous situation. More dangerous than it looks. No one bests an orc. All right. Finally, the problem was he could have uh, gotten uh, to us, and then we would have really been in trouble. I like that steel hammer. I'm not sure if I like the swing speed. We're going to check it. Dwarven armor is fantastic uh, for a mid-level character, not for us. Orc boots uh, the same. Unfortunately, he doesn't have light weightish um, heavy armor, if that makes sense. He only has armor that is heavy and actually is quite heavy. Orcish warhammer of shocks. I think I almost can't ignore that one that's a pretty sizable upgrade let's double check I mean that's one and a half times the damage but just look at the swing speed that is even slower okay there is I should talk about that. There is an option in 3BF where you can, with enough health, just open these. Apparently that's not the case here. We have just gotten a couple of diluted potions and that's really it. Great enemy, unfortunately not so great loot. I uh, got two skill books, which is also fine. And let's just double check where we are experience wise, drinking the remaining uh, potions. Warrior skills. We want to train two handed, which is now at eight. Not great, but it's a start, guys. We got to start somewhere. Boy, that is slow. I was hoping we would get to uh, level 2 sooner. Maybe even level 3 in episode 1. Let's uh, search for more prey. 